learn from them, you know. But you can do some sick moves on that. It just makes that specific map so much more. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hi guys, this is Matthias and welcome to today's video about the Staghound T17E1. Now notice down in the right side corner how I'm switching to the tier 4 upgrade of this tank and we'll be talking about upgrades quite a bit. What you'll see in this video is actually that I'm using two different choices of maximum upgrades. Now you might think that the one that I just demonstrated would be the most important one. Now in some situations it definitely is and it's really satisfying to, like I did in that situation, be able to outmaneuver and beat a much more powerful tank, in this case the Tiger tank, with this much weaker choice. And my personal favorite when it comes to the upgrades of the Staghound, and it's the same for the Panzer 38T on the German side, is the spotting scope. Now it does exactly what it says. Once you have this upgrade, if you zoom in with either your primary or your secondary, it will spot whatever enemy you're aiming at, and it goes both for infantry and for vehicles. To me, this is a very important upgrade in terms of team play. Now what I also came to realize is that at range when you're shooting at infantry, the secondary is actually much better. It has less drop, your screen doesn't shake, and it has faster bullet travel time, and it just simply kills the enemies faster and easier. Now, of course the primary is better against infantry if you need to rely on splash damage, meaning if you shoot into choke points, if you can damage them by hitting the ground or the wall next to them. But in many cases, the reason why you want to use the secondary against infantry is because you want to save your bullets of the primary for yeah, vehicles. So so. Now to me, one of the biggest difference from being in a tank in Battlefield 5 compared to most other games where you actually have the option of being in a tank and mainly I'm comparing Battlefield 5 to other Battlefield games. One of the biggest differences I've come to notice is that it's much harder to rely on a third person view. Normally, the moment I get into combat, I go into first person view, because for whatever reason, it seems like there's no way you can know where your gun is actually pointing when you're in third person view, because the reticle just seems off. I can't aim down. I can't aim down. Now notice that there are two nice. sets of reticles when you're in third person view and I think what they're doing here is that you can visually turn, you know, your head, your eyes in a new direction faster than you can turn your turret and therefore you see the two different sets of reticles. Now of course the turret will eventually get there but it's slower and it's more limited in terms of the angles up and down. Oh. My mind! I killed something. Also, don't underestimate the range of the weapons on this tank. They are both fantastic at long range, and I have many times been able to get kills from one flag to another flag, even on big maps such as Hamada. Now, on this map, for example, Twisted Steel, a very good strategy in order to help your team is to capture the D flag with this, uh, with this tank, and if it's uncontested, right. you can actually get kills on the bridge, meaning you can help oh, your teammates take... clear out E or B. Now, for obvious reasons, this tank is also fantastic if you want to go on a flank, either to cap one of the flags that are far from that anything area. that your team is controlling, or maybe you are really irritated with a camping, uh, let's say a camping AA or a camping sniper somewhere, you can use this tank to get close enough or to get into a very good angle to take them out. Now what I also want to point out about this tank is that this is definitely your choice of tank if you are the kind of player who doesn't really like tanks generally or especially not like tanks in Battlefield 5. If you are normally an infantry player and you just don't have the patience for a slow tank that needs a lot of time to get resupplied and to get repaired, and this is definitely the choice for you. So let's have a look now at these upgrades and see what they're doing. Uh, tier 1 upgrade, spotting scope. This is a no-brainer nowadays, even though I actually have tried the other side here. And um, yeah, let's go, let's go through these first, the ones that I have at the moment. So, uh, spotting scope, while in zoom scope, call out spotted infantry for teammates. And we've seen that and we'll see more of that throughout the video. 
Maintenance drill self-repair is twice as fast, but repairs half as much. Um, not entirely sure which one of those two is the best. From a team play, a team play aspect, this one might actually be better in some situations. And you'll see me using this also in uh, my previous uh, upgrade tree or upgrade choices. But for now, I have this one. So yeah, this one, the 20mm auto cannon, is uh, the weapon that is very significant for the Staghound and the light tank of the German side. I think it's called Panzer 38T. Uh, they have the similar, uh, or they have very similar weapons, or if it's exactly the same, I'm not entirely sure. But unlike the other tanks where you have one main cannon that shoots one big shell and then requires a reload for a second or so, just like the other traditional tanks. But this is the upgrade that switches or that, that replaces that main gun. Now this last upgrade, the AP round, it's... What this does is that it doesn't replace this cannon, it just adds to it. So you have an additional set of ammo which deals more damage to tanks, which you've seen me use already. And it's one of the, actually one of the most important things about this is that it just gives you more ammo. It adds to what you already have. So that's a really good up, uh, upgrade. Incendiary Launcher, this is one of the, the upgrade choices that I haven't tried out yet, as well as these Dumbfire Rockets. I haven't tried them out either. And yeah, later on in the video, you'll also see what it looks like when you drop uh, supplies for your teammates. Um, not a bad thing actually, it gives, uh, gives you some points and it resupplies and heals your teammates. If you put them in the right place, it can be very valuable actually. So you notice how the supplies actually shoots out from the tank and lands about 3-4 meters behind it, so you need to calculate for that when you activate that upgrade. Now, there was a few loadouts of tanks in Battlefield 1 that had the same utility, and if you liked that and you want to use it in Battlefield 5 as well, remember that unlike in Battlefield 1, those boxes do not end up right by your tank. Yeah, you have a very limited amount of armor-piercing rounds, so it's important to make them count. Ah! No! Mr. President with a thousand bits! Thank you, my friend! <laughs> so yes, I'm sure you know already by now, I never make any mistakes, I never crash with a plane, I never get stuck with any vehicle, I do everything flawlessly, and that's the end of that discussion. Now I hope you will enjoy the rest of the gameplay, there's gonna be quite a lot of it, you'll see me take advantage of these upgrades that we just discussed, and you'll also see something that my gameplay is becoming more and more about, team play in a squad with good Battlefield players. So yeah, thank you for watching. Left. Yeah. Yeah, smoke those bastards. Behind? Nine. Oh yeah, he's right there. He's on the other side of this uh, thingy. I'm gonna jump out just to cover you. Yeah. Did you see what I'm shooting? Yep, 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 yep. Oh, he's dead. I'm gonna teabag him for good measure. <laughs> Are they, oh, they're, they're on D again. Leave our D's B. Middle. Oh. 
There, uh, behind the rock, in front. I got them both. <laughs> I ran one over. Oh yeah, he's spotted and he's dead. Yeah, it's super good. Let's see if I can. There, yeah, spotted. Yeah, he's dead. Oh, there's another one here somewhere. The spotting scope is almost OP. Oh, it works on, on both his two. You see what I was aiming? Yeah. That rocket. I'm gonna go to the outskirts of D. He's here. I thought I marked. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to be on D. You see that rocket there? I, I kind of felt it. Is it spotted there? Right, yeah, where I was shooting it. Oh, I drove past him? Got him. This is actually a good, good little tank. Oh, there's a tank. Yeah, and I can't move. Behind us also. We'll try to deal with it. I can absorb two of his shots, then I'm dead. That gives you enough time to... I can't hit him. Too much bullet. Nice. Oh, I, oh, he almost killed me with one shot. He almost one hit killed me. No idea. Yeah, I see them. Got one of them. Got two of them. On either. No rest. Come to the objective.
Any moments? Kill one. Two planes above you. Yeah, yeah, this this tank is useless against them basically. They're on the actual like on the actual flag of the flag side. Am I alive? How did I survive that? The maneuverability of this baby. I was saved. Yeah! 